a year into the nation's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's time for some honest reflection. What grade would you give the federal government for its response? How about your state legislature? Do you think the lockdowns have helped control the spread of the disease? And if so, well, how happy are you that the government has essentially taken over the health care of every American? Do you think the limitations of government should be ignored during a time of crisis? All this and more in today's episode of Analysis Behind the News, where we provide the perspective and the plan to help restore American liberty and independence. The response to COVID-19 is an issue that has divided and will continue to divide people throughout the country. The initial response from many levels of government in local, state, and federal mostly followed the playbook of totalitarian countries, placing people on house arrest, closing schools, businesses, and churches, and threatening those that didn't follow such draconian measures. Overnight, Americans were robbed of their liberties and overall freedom by unconstitutional overreactions. The veracity seen in this type of nonsensical behavior can also be seen in the many extreme nonsensical stances taken through the issue of so-called racial, social, and economic justice flip-flopping the very idea of good to evil and evil to good has been accomplished in less than a generation. We must work diligently to expose the truth, especially when life and liberty hang in the balance. So, a year into this, let's look at the results of the lockdowns from a standpoint of locking people down or letting them choose their own path. Last week, the New American Magazine published an online article with the headline, California, Florida, got same COVID-19 results with opposing policies. It reported, California and Florida took opposite approaches to dealing with COVID-19. The Golden State imposed a year-long and ongoing lockdown and mask mandate, while the Sunshine State, after a brief shutdown, has been wide open. All the experts said that California Governor Gavin Newsom's policies were the ones to follow if the coronavirus were to be checked. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, meanwhile, was savage in the press for allegedly ignoring the science. The experts, as it turns out, were wrong. Despite their differing approaches, reports the Associated Press, California and Florida have experienced almost identical outcomes in COVID-19 case rates. The same goes for their death rates. The mainstream media has been discussing this since late last year when Governor DeSantis said his state was faring twice as well than lockdown states. While the mainstream admits that there were some similarities when comparing raw data, the Los Angeles Times published a piece two weeks ago indicative of the gymnastics that it takes to demonstrate to readers that it's unfair to compare the states. So what do they suggest is causing the difference? The shrinking difference in the death rates is likely the product of California's higher levels of poverty, density, overcrowding, and climate that make it particularly susceptible to coronavirus spread, experts say. Then the paper has the audacity to print, and still, California better controlled the virus. The San Francisco Chronicle also pointed out the similarities as published on MSN.com, but they compared counties of the two states to reinforce why CDC guidelines must absolutely be followed. Then they pivoted to the new variants and concluded with a quote from Dr. Elena Cyrus, an infectious disease epidemiologist at the University of Central Florida, who said, Without enforceable mandates like mask wearing, occupancy restrictions, and the like, there's a greater opportunity for a newer strain to move through the population. That's a concern. However, in a video featuring Dr. Simone Gold's presentation on the recommendation of America's frontline doctors regarding the experimental COVID-19 vaccine, she said, the disinformation was apparent since the beginning. Given all of the censorship she and her group has encountered from the very start, it's apparent the powers that be don't want you to see the truth of how a virus that has a 99.9% survival rate shouldn't be treated with the overwhelming force of government tyranny. Calling the vaccine an experimental biological agent, Dr. Gold pulls no punches and goes over stats from nations that you would think 
would have the highest death rates from the virus, such as the poorest nations with no mandates or lockdowns, but they do have hydroxychloroquine. She said, For those of you who don't know this or haven't followed me yet on Twitter at America's Frontline Doctors, there's a lot of videos. One of my favorite is a talk we gave on Sub-Saharan Africa because people just don't know this. So in America, the death rates are in the like 800 range per million. In India, the death rates are around, if, I might be slightly off on the numbers, around 70 per million, right? So it's 10% because they have a very liberal hydroxychloroquine policy. In Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, the poorest places in the world, no social distancing, no masks, no ICUs. They have a death rate of 1% of the Western nations. 1%, 1%, right? Now, I believe it's due to widely available hydroxychloroquine. I don't think you can explain it for any other reason. But even if there's another reason, you certainly can't say that this affects black people worse. Now, think about this. The very government telling you that hydroxychloroquine is bad for you, tells you to stay out of the hospitals, quarantine the healthy, wear multiple masks, lock down your way of life, and get a shot in your arm of some experimental biological agent. This same government that has implemented policies that have resulted in many deaths is making it very difficult for you to get inexpensive, life-saving medications. It has also helped to censor the voices of reason that disagree with the government policies. At the end of her video, Dr. Gold presents the recommendations from the not-for-profit group, America's Frontline Doctors. She said, Ultimately, America's Frontline Doctors stands as follows. If you're under age 20, the experimental vaccine is prohibited, in our opinion. Absolutely prohibited. We simply don't know enough about the effects on fertility and we do know this virus essentially does not affect young people. Essentially irrelevant. From age 20 to 50, if you're healthy, we strongly discourage. There was a little debate in our group if we would come down and strongly discourage in this group or prohibited. I fell in the prohibited category, but the majority of us said just strongly discourage for age 20 to 50. We strongly discourage the vaccine in age 20 to 50 because there's an exceedingly low risk of death from COVID. There's unknown risk from the experimental vaccine of causing autoimmune disease. There's unknown risk of this pathogenic priming antibody dependent enhancement. And there is an unknown risk of infer lifelong infertility. So age 20 to 50, we think it is strongly discouraged. From age 50 to 70, if you're healthy, we also say it's strongly discouraged for the same reasons. There's a very low risk from COVID-19, there's an unknown risk of autoimmune disease, unknown risk of pathogenic priming, unknown effect on the placenta. From age 50 to 70, and you are, do have serious comorbid conditions, we say it is discouraged. We say that because we feel the experimental vaccine is higher risk than early or prophylactic treatment with long established medications such as hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin. From age 70, and above, if you're healthy, we tell people it's just your own personal risk assessment. We believe an experimental vaccine is less ideal than old established medicines, but we say leave it up to the person. Over age 70 with serious comorbid conditions such as nursing homes, we also call it to personal risk assessment. We again stand with hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin being safer in this population, but we don't think it's irrational to take it if you're over 70 living in a nursing home. We don't think that that's irrational. We're not trying to say all vaccines are unsafe in all circumstances. We don't believe anybody at any age should be pressured, and we are concerned about persons over 70 who don't have advocates being pressured into this. We already know, actually, of many cases like that. But we also don't want people to be overly worried that we're saying it's definitely unsafe. We're not saying it's definitely unsafe. We're saying we don't know. And at least if you're over 70 with several medical conditions, you do have some, de you know, you have some risk of dying from this thing. So it's not fundamentally irrational to take it if you should decide to take it. But certainly under age 50, we fall at, you know, strongly discouraged. I myself would, I tell everybody, I would never let a woman of childbearing age take this, this, I would never, I would fight tooth and nail under no circumstances until this placenta question is answered. 
Her entire 56 minute presentation is well worth your time. You won't hear these recommendations come from the nonsensical government. It is more interested in controlling you with irrational fears that fuel panic. Another telling example comes from Governor Nome of South Dakota. She has never had a statewide mask mandate nor a lockdown, but has low COVID-19 infection rates and the best employment rate in the U.S. In a recent speech to Hillsdale College, she said, In the last six months, um, it has amazed me to watch fear control people. Um, that, that this pandemic really used emotion and fear to manipulate people in ways that we've never seen before. And what bothered me early on was recognizing the fact that when you have a leader overstep their authority in a time of crisis, that that's when you lose your country. So we were talking at our table a little bit about why I've spoken about the things that I've spoken about, why I've chosen to use my press conferences as educational opportunities. It was because it was necessary. Um, it, was, it, it became very real to me that I was making different decisions than virtually any other governor in the nation and that people didn't know why. And that a little bit of our history, constitution, the reason that America is special needed to be revisited again. And that really is uh, behind a lot of the decisions that we've had here in South Dakota. So you are in a special place because as you travel from state to state, you'll see a lot of challenges when you come to South Dakota, you realize that our people are happy. That they wake up happy in the morning and they're optimistic about the future. Optimistic about the future. She's 100% accurate. A free society is one that can choose individually what is best for oneself and family. A government stepping outside of its limitations and trampling all over the liberties and freedom of we the people cannot be tolerated. This is why the John Birch Society declared early on in the pandemic that freedom is the cure. Our action project advocates and educates citizens and authorities on the basic concept of governmental limitations and how to use the constitutional tool of interpositioning to protect your God-given rights. Fear, panic, and government-sanctioned paranoia are not reasons to throw out the founding principles of this country. To bring additional clarity to this, The New American has just published its April 5, 2021 issue that includes an article by Annalisa Pasek titled, Behind Irrational Fears, Fueling the Panic. The subhead of the article is, The coronavirus can cause death, but the fear of the virus is not due to the deadliness of the disease. The dangers are being played up. The fear is being stoked for political aims. She concludes the article with this. Dr. Joseph Mercola, in his article, The World is Suffering from Mass Delusional Psychosis, examines the work of psychiatrist and medical legal expert, Dr. Mark McDonald, who argues that many people anxious about the coronavirus believe that they are going to die no matter what age, no matter what state of health they're in. That's delusional psychosis. It's false, it's wrong, it's not backed up by any evidence, and many, many Americans are living that and believing that. To resist such dangerous political machinations, Americans will have to begin to live their lives not necessarily risk-free, but courageously. Perhaps we do this by rising above the lies and staying true to the tenets of liberty and freedom upon which this great nation was built. Perhaps by refusing to believe that this pervasive chaos is unending and hopeless, society can turn around and truly be great again. So how about you? Does the government's tyrannical response to COVID-19 get your blood boiling? If not, you might want to refamiliarize yourself with the experiment of freedom our founders intended, instead of the overt tyranny we have been experiencing in this last year. But let's realize this one point. Once government has usurped powers, it will not willingly give them up. Those intent on tyranny don't let crises go to waste. They will milk this false pandemic to make up for all of the ground they supposedly lost during the Trump administration. The only way to stop this is to emerge stronger in liberty than ever before. When patriotic Americans of good moral and religious ideals organize under the banner of freedom, they become the force needed 
to take back this country. The John Birch Society provides just such an organization. Since 1958, our organization has educated electorates on the issues that matter most and has helped to expose the groups fighting for this global-wide tyranny. Members meet each month to plan local community activities that help to educate others on the constitutional tools our founders gave us to restore and protect our God-given liberties and the independence and freedom we all crave. These efforts apply direct pressure on those making the decisions, amplifying members' efforts. The greater the tyranny, the greater the need for the work of the John Birch Society. Read this latest issue at thenewamerican.com and share this with others that you work with in your local community. Dues-paying members of the John Birch Society get the magazine included in their benefits. So join today to get started. Don't lose another year of your precious life huddled in irrational fear. Do something about it. Links are in the video description or head over to jbs.org. Who do you know that cares about freedom and independence? Because folks, it's time to act. The very survival of our republic depends on it. I'm Bill Hahn for the John Birch Society, and until next time, stay informed, stay active, and be bold, patriots.